Hey quilters, in today's show we're going to make a quilt as you go pet placemat. Welcome back to Quilt Live. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. Thanks for joining us today. Chris is in the house. How's Chris? Chris is coming. There I am. There you are. <laughs> what a lovely surprise. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, before we talk about what's going on with you, Listen, quilters, sometimes Chris and I, we know things. Um, let me introduce you to the Go Big Die Catcher. You know that little platform that we always have here um, in the studio? That was actually part of our table. But now AccuQuilt is allowing you to pre-order your die catcher for your Go Big. Are you excited? So go to the website. Um, there's a big green banner that says more information about the Go Big Die Catcher. But I think we should open it up and put it out today. All right, so here's what it's going to do. You're going to pull it right out. It's super easy. It's going to come with an instruction manual. Or you can just watch me. All right, here we go. We're going to take off the styrofoam. Listen, so many of you have been asking about this, and it's been a secret for a while, but now we can talk about it. All right, you ready? Greg is right here. So look at this. Look at how pretty. All right, and what it's going to do, Greg, can you get a good shot of this? It's just going to slide right back here. And you kind of want to lift it up a little bit. Look. <laughs> That's it, that's all you have to do. And then if you needed to put your Go Big away, you can just slide this off and tuck it away with your Go Big. Pretty exciting. Okay, quilters, make sure you check it out on our website. Uh, there's a big green banner that says, AccuQuilt Go Big Die Catcher. All right, so now, Chris, <laughs> are you excited about that? I am, that is really, really slick looking. I know, because, you know, people have been asking about it forever. So yes. it's kind of fun. Okay, so um, since we showed that, tell us what you're working on. So I actually have a quilt along coming up. It's my first time posting a, like a full on a quilt along. So we'll be making my Royal Courtyard quilt pattern. And is this it was in Accu quilt friendly? It is. So you could use your three and a half inch strip cutter okay. to cut the, the initial strips and then you have to sub cut from yeah. there. But that will save you a lot of time cutting strips. And um, when does your quilt along start? Because we want everybody to go to rosecityoriginals.com and download the pattern. And when does it start? Starts on May 5th. Okay. And it'll just be every week I'll send out what we're doing that week. Um, it's going to be five weeks long and you should have a finished quilt top. Oh my gosh. I'm loving it. Are you doing your scrappy? Are you doing your two colors? What are you going to do? I think I am going to do my mint and forest green fabric. Oh, there you go. So okay. I can get a picture of that quilt. I've already done it in the black and white. That's the, the cover photo. Yes. I designed this fabric and then I designed it again in a different colorway. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, look but at it you. is really fun scrappy. Look at you. I think I might do it scrappy, but we'll we'll have to see. So May the 5th, make sure you um, join Chris. It's rosecityoriginals.com. You can download the pattern. And speaking of quilt alongs, next week on Wednesday, the lovely Erica will be here and we are kicking off our quilt along. It is the Go Simply Cubed pattern. You're going to need the 10 inch cube, but Chris, what if you don't have the 10 inch cube? Could you make it with a different cube? You absolutely can. It would just be a different yeah. size quilt. Yep. It's going to be awesome. All right. Oh, wait, but... Yes, you can. I had to think about the pieces, but yes, you can. All right. And before we talk about um, projects, speaking of things that are happening, um, they're going to let Erica and I out of the building next week. And we are traveling. We're going to do some um, in-store events 
on Thursday, we are going to, we'll be in Columbia, Missouri at Apple Tree Quilts. I've been there before, they're lovely. And then Friday, um, we'll be at Jackman's in St. Louis. I've also been there and they are also lovely. And then Saturday, we're at the Quilt Sampler in Springfield, Missouri. And I'm super excited I've not been to that store. So if you go to their websites, you can register for the class and you can hang out with Eric and I. We're gonna be there all day. Okay, I think we did all of the housekeeping. So let's look at some projects from our intro video. First up, this is Darling from Amanda. So uh, Chris, do you know what die she used? I think that is the chimney sweep block on board. It is, and the chimney sweep, the thing I love about it is that you can turn it on point. Look at how fun that is. And I love the flying geese as the border. I just love the scrappiness of it. Good job, Amanda. Next, we have Bernice. Oh, Chris, you mm. like this die. Tell me what it is. Yes, this is the Cleopatra's fan. Yeah, and this one's Very pretty. super pretty because it kind of gives it that medallion look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And don't be scared of curves, quilters, because our dies have notches. And these are very gentle curves. They are very gentle curves. When we first got the die, I was a little nervous, and then I kind of was like, oh, I can sew this. This is great. Yeah. All right, we're making a quilt as you go pet placemat. So here is my photo of the day. There's Pearl. She's my kitty cat. She's a rescue kitty, um, and she's full of sass. And so the question of the day is... What kind of pet do you have? Tell us about your pets. So Greg and Brock have no pets, but Kenyon has a menagerie. Yeah, two, two cats, two dogs, and two girls in your family, right? <laughs> okay, they could build an ark, I feel like. Tell, Chris, tell us about you. Let's see, we have two dogs, a cat, a bunny, five chickens. Um, we have fish that just had babies, so we have like a bajillion fish. Oh, gosh, and yes. And a leopard gecko. Okay, so do your chickens lay eggs? Yes. And is your bunny's name Fufu? No. It so could have been. The, <laughs> our bunny, his name is Anakin, and he had a brother who unfortunately passed away a couple months ago. Okay, who was I'm Vader. sorry to laugh about the brother, but Anakin bunny is hilarious. Well, it was so... It was two, he's white, and Vader was black. So it's like dark side, light side. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry for his loss, but that's super cute. Okay, so in the comments section, tell us all about your pets. Chris is going to love it. We're going to have a great time with it today. All right, so today we're going to give away one of our two and a half inch strip dies and our June Taylor Quilt As You Go Pet Placement Placemat Kit. Now, listen, if you're the winner, I have already sent you an email. If you already have a two and a half inch strip die, tell me what other strip die you want because we're doing fun things today. So quilters, be sure and register for future events on the AccuQuilt event page for your chance to win. By registering, you will receive event emails and Chris is gonna announce the winner at the end of our show. All right, Chris, shall we get going here? Yes. All right, let's do this. So I have opened my batting. So I want to talk about this for a minute. So this is for our pet placement, you're going to need the placement quilts as you go kit and the two and a half inch strip die. Those are our project supplies for it. Um, you're also going to need the one and three quarter inch strip die and I'm going to show you why. It's kind of cool. All right. So before I cut some strips, I just want to talk about this. Um, this is what the batting looks like and here, are the two and a half inch strips, which I have already cut. I sprayed some starch savvy on them so they're nice and crisp and I've cut them and they, I've cut them to the pattern. All right, so they are all ready to go. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to prep your um, batting here. Uh, it's a little different than we normally do. So just hang on for a minute, but let's cut some strips. So for this, we're gonna use our new die catcher. All right, so for this project, you need on the facades one and three quarter inch strips. So this is our one and three quarter inch strip die. And it has one, two, three, four, five sections of one and three quarter. But here's kind of the cool thing. Our dies only cut 
where there is fabric and a mat. I'm gonna turn this off for a second, okay? And I need two strips of one and three quarter for each side, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to cover two sections. And then this right here, I'm just gonna leave right there. And I'm gonna do the same here. So these are just cute little fat quarters. All right, but look, this one has paw prints. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna barely cover the blades for my two sections. And then I'm gonna use a smaller mat. Okay. It's only gonna cut where there's fabric and a mat. So I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna make sure those two blades are covered. I'm gonna turn on my go big. This is the inaugural cut with the new die catcher. You can write that down in your calendar. We are all here. <laughs> Look how slick that is. Ta-da! Look at how fun that is. Okay, so now I can give it some love, slide my mat, and I have my two strips. Okay? All right, so that's the first thing I'm gonna cut. The second thing I'm gonna cut, oh, there, see? I was so excited that we were cutting. The second thing I'm gonna cut is bias binding because we're gonna uh, put our binding around our little fish shape. And so because there's curves, you wanna have bias so it will stretch. And we have lots of videos on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page on how to cut bias binding. Now in this particular pattern, you're gonna use two and a quarter inch strips to make your bias binding instead of your normal two and a half inch strips, okay? But watch this. All right, so I'm gonna turn off my uh, machine. I'm gonna lay it like this so Greg can get a really good look at how I did this. All right, quilters, so what I did is, oh, here, Greg, we can put it right here. Um, I cut uh, 16 inches with the fabric strips. We've tried other sizes, this is the perfect size, okay? I've also cut my salvage edge. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fold one side down, because look right here, there's that bias. That's what we want, and one side Okay, actually look at this. It's gonna be easier if I do it this way because then I can move it. Okay, so one side down, one side up. They're gonna just be opposite. Okay. Now, I'm gonna take my fabric and very carefully, just very carefully, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna line it up along the bottom blade of this die. Okay, make sure my fold covers my blade, look, lots of stretch. Now I'm gonna fold this up to meet my other fold. Again, I just wanna make sure that I'm barely covering those blades, okay? And then you're gonna fold it in like an envelope. So here's my fold, here's my fold. But now look, Lots of real estate here, not so much on this side. So we're gonna come right here. All right. We're gonna make sure this fold doesn't go past the lines. All of our blades are covered. And this is the two and a quarter inch strip die. Okay, and then I'm gonna find a mat. Here we go. Oh, thank you, Brock. <laughs> I was so prepared. <laughs> All right, here we go. So 
So now we're going to come here. Okay, you ready? So this will work for two and a half inches, uh, two inches, two and a quarter inches. While that's cutting, we have a question. Isn't that amazing? All right, do you want to tell us, Chris, in just a second here, we're going to show everybody. Look. So now I can give it some love. Slide, don't lift. I'm going to take off the edges. Okay, see, look. This is what happens when you don't get it to the very end. Doggone it. I tried really hard. So now you're just going to snip it here. Okay. But we have lots of videos on how to cut bias binding. So now look at this. Look at all the strips of bias. Lots of strips and stretch so it can go around our placemat. All right, now I'm gonna leave this here for a minute because we're coming over here. So Chris, before I get started prepping our fabric here, tell us what people, tell us about people's pets. So we actually have a quick question before yes. I get to the pets. MJ is asking, why don't you have to press your fabric before putting it in the die cutter? Is it magic? Um, I actually did press it yesterday <laughs> when I was prepping it. It just probably looks a little wrinkled now. If there are obvious wrinkles in it, for sure you want to press it out. And you can use some of the great start savvy. It's going to um, clean it or it's going to keep it nice and crisp. Sometimes when I'm doing bias binding, I will actually press it, fold it, and press it so that it I looks like thinking, an envelope on yeah. my die. But it's hard when I do that on camera. So I was thinking that would be really smart to keep those lines all nice and crisp and parallel for when you line it up. Yeah, yeah. It really does make it easier. That way you can see the edge, you know. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So Any other go. questions? No other questions, but we have a huge list of ha, pets. So, so let's excited. start going through some of those. Okay, let's look at some of those. All right, so Carolyn has a parrot. Annette has two cats named Shelby and Sammy and two dogs named Bo and Bella. Okay. Super cute. Uh, Susan has three Labrador retrievers and one ragdoll cat. What's a ragdoll I, cat? I am not sure. I'm going to have to Google that. Okay. A three Labrador retriever sounds like a handful. Three I've had one. like so much and work. I hope the ragdoll cat is just chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's cool. see. Uh, oh, MJ has two cats named Butter and Scotch. Oh. That is super fun. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if I had two cats, we'd have to name them like Chips and Salsa or Chips and Guac or something. Something that goes together. That's so fun. Peanut butter jelly. You know, those kind of things. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, while we tell us about your pets, um, I'm going to show you how to start your project today. All right. So here's what we're going to do. The back of this batting has fusible already on it. So we don't have to spray basting spray. We don't have to do any of that. But do not, do not, do not, do not touch your hot iron directly to this batting it will melt and you will be sad so here's what we're gonna do hey we have new irons here um, soon on our website you can see our cute little Alessio irons I'm pretty excited about them okay so what I'm gonna do is why is this not, oh hold on there you go listen it has a light so you can I iron have, uh, in the dark? Is I that... have the M3 like that, and I absolutely love it. Do you iron in the dark, Chris? Oh, look, it's I so green, though. I don't. I don't either. I've never had but... an iron that I could use in the dark. <laughs> I, I wasn't really, like, sold on the headlight, but it actually is really nice when you're trying to, like, fold out creases or get your seams really nice and flat because it like casts a shadow. Oh. So I, I have really grown to love it. Okay. Well, first of all, it's in go green. So everybody needs one. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I love the fact that it has a headlight. 
My vacuum has a headlight too, just like why would I vacuum in the dark? The fact that it, <laughs> I vacuum is in and of itself kind of funny. Okay, so while I'm ironing this, tell us it has a little mat so it doesn't burn your um, counter. All right, so while I'm ironing, tell us what people's about people's pets. Sure. Um, oh, look, Robin also has a ragdoll cat. Okay, Robin, um, tell us about cat. ragdoll cats, and we maybe we need one. She also has a show cat, a black and white cat, or a black cat, and a shepherd. Wow. Debbie has her precious dog named Daisy. That's oh. adorable. That's Oh, funny. Holly. Holly has two cats, a gerbil, and six mice. Okay, I feel like that's counterintuitive to have <laughs> a, a my, mice Gotta keep them separate. and a cat. I'm just saying, I don't know. I feel like if there were mice in our house, Pearl would eat them. I don't know. She's she has no teeth and no front claws, so she's pretty. Uh, oh. She's pretty limited. My with cat her has lost all of his fangs, like his his canine teeth. So oh. he just has his little teeth left. And I think sometimes he forgets because we'll be playing and he'll like go to play bite and there's nothing there. <laughs> yeah. Pro was a rescue kitty and she had a terrible infection. And so she, um, I know. So they, they pulled her teeth. Okay, so look. And we've used our green iron. So I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to put it over here. Okay, Chris, I like this little iron. Our right? huge shout it's out really to our nice. friends at, <laughs> at Elysio. We're doing that. Okay. So now that this is attached, see, then I can trim around our shape. And I'm actually, so here's our pro tip. Okay. Solid blue lines, this is what I'm going to cut on. Okay. These lines here are for um, piecing. It's from here, you're going to sew a quarter of an inch. All right. All right, Chris, have you made one of these? I have not, Kay. no. Okay. Well, I might have there's, to, though, because my listen, cat's a messy. <laughs> there's, there's a dog bone one if you wanted to um, make one for your dog. Oh, yes. Fun. Okay. All right, tell us while I'm cutting the batting here. Sure. Uh, let's see. Linda has two cats and a dog. Okay. Jan has a blue point Siamese named Lucy. Oh, Sounds Siamese nice. that are blue are pretty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh, Debbie has two horses and six cats. Oh, Debbie, I want to come to your house. I do love horses. So my oldest son, Taylor, who's not afraid of anything, is scared of horses. Oh. Huh. I don't know why. I mean, they can be a little intimidating. <laughs> Well, you know, he's 6'2". I feel like, you know, there's oh. not much to be intimidated by. Right. And as a child, he saw horses and touched their soft noses, but I don't know. I just mm. think that's a funny thing about him. Okay. Yeah. What else? Let's see. Uh, Melody has an old tabby cat. Sheila says, we have a great Pyrenees who is in the house due to heavy rain today. Oh, my uh, goodness. A great Pyrenees has taken up the whole house. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, we had an African gray parrot, but she passed a couple years ago. Aww, oh, that's unfortunate. Sorry. I always am surprised. Like, parrots live an incredibly long time. Oh, yeah, they do. Like, birds live forever, practically. <laughs> right? Okay. It's... So, see, look what we're doing. We're doing good things here. We've trimmed our little placemat. It has a backing. So now we're ready to sew. So let's start. All June Taylor products, Quilt Tissue Go products, are basically the same. So here's kind of a cool thing. Um, typically with AccuQuilt, oh, thank you. Typically with AccuQuilt, um, we cut on the lengthwise grain. Strips are the exception, right? Because um, usually cut with the fabric strips. But because with at uh, June Taylor products, because we're going to stitch and glue and stitch and glue, um, you don't have, you can kind of, uh, you don't have to worry so much about the lengthwise grain. So for example, I wanted all of my 
fabric to go the right way, right? Mm -hmm. So I just cut it so that the strips had my fabric going the right way. So the print was all facing the same That's direction. That's the word, the print. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've taken my two and a half inch strip die. I've cut my nine pieces. I followed the pattern. It's gonna tell you right here how to do it. And then I'm gonna put right sides together, okay? And I'm actually gonna pin here, and then I'm gonna pull out my little June Taylor basting sp um, stick. And, hey, Kenyon, where are all those pins you dropped on the floor this morning? Oh, thank you. We, <laughs> we had kind of a funny thing this morning. Um, Kenyon was trying to help me, and he um, opened up the drawer and a box of pins fell out. <laughs> And we tried to find a, a magnet to pick them up. No such thing existed at QQuilt. <laughs> we tried all sorts of stupid things to do it. But okay, so now I'm going to, oh, I guess I have to sew this way. Okay, so here's two and then three and four, okay? So you're just gonna come in from that line and sew a quarter of an inch. And it's a true quarter of an inch. And this is just such a fun project. You could totally use up your scraps. This would be like a fun, like housewarming gift if you were going somewhere where the people have pets, okay? So we're gonna make this in absolutely no time at all, okay? So see, now look, it's perfect there. And I wanna make sure I'm building it the same on both sides, okay? So now my little paw prints can come here on piece three, okay? And then I'm gonna show you how to use basting spray, or um, glue sticks. All right, so Chris, while I'm sewing, tell us about people's pets. Let's see, Froggy has a 12 and a half year old rescue greyhound named Elvis. Okay, yes, first of all, Froggy king. should have frogs. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> But, oh, so many people rescue greyhounds. I think that's a great thing. Yes. Are your, ki uh, your pets rescued? Chris? Um, or we have a mix. Okay. So well, one of our dogs is a rescue. The cat's a rescue. One of our dogs, um, we got, like, a friend had puppies. So we oh, got sure. one of the puppies. Sure. Um, and then we raised the chickens from, like, day old chicks which are terrifying to hold because they feel so fragile <laughs> and are your chicks named yes okay i think all of them out there have names okay well in a second you're gonna all. tell me okay so look what i've done i've taken june taylor basting stick our little glue stick it shows purple it's gonna dry clear and now i've done my sides so now i can do the next section. And again, I wanna make sure my kittens are facing the right way. All right, all right, so Chris, tell us your chicken's names. Cause you know, we have a neighbor named Chicken Brian cause he has chickens. <laughs> so I know we have Lady Cadbury, Cadbury <laughs> cream eggs. And then there's Quiche Lorraine. Oh gosh. Um, extravaganza. Extravaganza, she is a, oh, I that's hilarious. What kind she has like a poof of feathers on her head. Okay. So she's our fancy chicken. Um, <laughs> Everybody should, if you have chickens, you should have a fancy one. Okay. Yes. And I can't, I know one is sassy pants. Cause when she was like a chick, like she would give some major side eye to everybody. So she just <laughs> was full of sass. And I don't remember the last one's name. Okay. It's something egg related. Oh, I hope so. That's so fun. Like souffle or something. Something, yeah. Should totally be that. That's, or Eggs Benedict. <laughs> it could be Eggs Benedict Arnold. That would be fun. There you go. I should not be allowed uh, we have to a couple questions name pets. About the, yeah, we have a couple questions about the placemats. Okay, talk to us. What is the finished size of that placemat? Sure. Hold, please. It is 18 by 11. There we go. Okay. And does AccuQuilt have a dog bone die for the 
dog placemats. No, but we have two dogs. We have a Scotty dog and a, what is it? It's not, it's Calico Cat and a Gingham dog. There we go. Gingham dog, okay. Yeah. Um, but the, June Taylor has bone placemats. So instead of fish for the, and this would right, be fun because you could put like um, uh, fish from the Sea Life medley on it. Yes. Yep. I saw that in yesterday's show. That was super cute. Yeah. The Gibney called it the seafood medley. <laughs> we will never let her live that down. <laughs> it does have crab and fish. So, but it's called the Sea Life medley. Okay. Any other questions? Don't forget, you can just ask Chris in the comments section. We'll read them for you. Who's helping us with comments today? Let's see. It looks like we have Lauren helping. Hi, Lauren. There. Hi, Lauren. And Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Courtney saved me because she, she helps so many times on our shows and with social media. She's terrific. Okay, you ready? Right? Okay. So now my little placement is ready. Oh, dang. I need two more pieces. But wait, there's more fabric, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And, hey, Kenyon, over there are two more fabrics that I grabbed or brought. Could you grab them for me? I didn't realize, I didn't count right. They're already cut over there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, those. Thank you. Do you want to be on camera? Okay, just checking. <laughs> All right, so now we need two little last pieces. So look, we're gonna do that. Don't forget, because when we're all done, then we're going to trim from the other side and we'll know. All right, don't forget if you have questions, tell us about your pets, all the things. Chris is answering all the questions today. If you have questions about the new die catcher, if you have questions about our upcoming event, we're answering all We actually all do have a question about an upcoming event. Uh, yes. So for we're your travels next week, uh, when don't you're forget, in Springfield, is there... Is their visit there just on upgrading the machines? Will they be showing and giving any tips on anything in particular? Yes. Um, Shelly went to the event in Wichita, Kansas a while back. Oh, that um, was I a fun Barbara event. I think Barbara was out there. Yeah, me and um, Brock and went. She, yeah, and she said it was very informational. Um, it, Brock and I went, and we had a great time, and mostly we went to a Kansas City baseball game afterwards, which was super fun. Super fun. Yeah. Um, so they are going to be, a, they are doing a trade up uh, program, but they're also doing a learn program. So we're going to okay. talk about cubes and we're going to talk about how to convert patterns and, and use your cubes to um, convert patterns. We're going to talk about building the grid. So, you know, normally cube um, blocks are in a two by two grid. And uh, we're gonna show you how to use three by three and a four by four. We're also gonna talk about bob dies and the value of a bob die. And we have a little trunk show. We're there, I think from 10 to two. I don't know, I just go where Erica tells me, okay? <laughs> so Sounds those like are great questions. Lot. Yeah. Yes. All right, so now my placemat is complete. So now I can come right here and I didn't subcut my fabric according to the pattern, but we're gonna trim it right here because we cut it on camera. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the bottom one the same. Chris, do you typically, when you build placements like this or projects like this, do you do them the same? Like you build them out, the pieces are same, you make them scrappy. Um, let's see, I did one very similar to this. It was a June Taylor bag, I think the Sophie bag. Oh, yes. And I did it scrappy while I was trying to make it not symmetrical, but it pretty much ended up symmetrical, so. <laughs> I know. Sometimes that happens to me, I think, okay, I'm gonna make this totally scrappy, and then in my um, best efforts to make it scrappy, it is not. Now, the cool thing about June Taylor products 
is that you can just sew along here. And it's pretty forgiving. Like if you don't get a perfect quarter inch seam on it, it's okay because this the pieces are gonna stitch out. So which is which is kind of nice. Okay. And now I'm gonna come and do this side. I'm liking this. I am taking this home to the pearl today. She won't know what to do. <laughs> she probably won't eat for days. She's kind of a messy eater. We were talking about on the show yesterday, Chris, that I could have put before I bind it, and maybe that's what I'm gonna do, is put some of that um, clear vinyl over the okay. top before I bind it, which is actually, now that I talk about it, it's probably what I'm gonna end up doing, because then I can just wipe it down. Mm-hmm, that's smart. Yeah, and then and then it'll wash, you know, I can wash it on, you know, I can wash it by hand or throw it in the washing machine and just lay yeah. it flat to dry. I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. Okay, you ready? I think that's smart. So now look, okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with my little glue stick. All right, Chris, tell us about people's pets. Let's see. Oh, I scrolled too far. Let's see. Courtney. Um, not a pet lover, but this week I have two dogs as my husband and daughter are both out of town. Okay. I wonder how that uh, happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet. Okay. Shall, shall we guess? Shall we figure this out? I bet her I, daughter is grown, and the dogs belong to the daughter. That's a possibility. I mean, what or would the you dog, think? Or the dogs belong to the daughter and husband, but since they're out, she has to take care of them. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Celeste has three cats, a rabbit, ten chickens, and three wild deer that feed there every day. Oh, wow. My that's my mother-in-law cool. is constantly posting pictures that she has deer that come into her backyard, like practically up to her back door. And their backyard is not huge. Uh-huh. But they constantly have deer in their yard. Really? And it's just incredible. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, do you have deer? No. We have the biggest raccoons on the planet. Mm. Um, our raccoons, like... Okay, so normally quilters, you're gonna follow the pattern and trim it accordingly. But again, I cut these on camera. Um, we have the biggest raccoons on the planet, I swear. Mm -hmm. They come out at night and they have no, they have no shame. Like they'll knock over trash cans and they're yeah. huge. And they just look at you like, you know, I'll go and holler at them out the back door and they just look at me like, really? Ser and Pearl goes nuts when they're out there. Oh, I'm sure. She just yeah. loses her mind. So, all right. We so have wild a couple, deer. Yeah, wild deer. Yep. And we actually have a couple questions about the die catcher. Oh, ask. Let's see. Do we know how much it's going to retail for? I got nothing. Okay. I just looked at the website and I didn't see anything there either. Yeah. So um, you, can... you can sign up to receive updates yes. about it as we get closer. Yes. Um, I also saw that on the back side there, there's actually a spot where you can put the power cord for the go big. Like it stores inside the die oh, catcher, here. which we is talk about pretty it here. awesome. I can, I can walk right over here and we can talk about it. Hey, is that true? Okay, we're going to take it off. Does it come apart? Oh, look at this. Don't look here. Because it's our... our first one here look at that that's cool so you can store yeah, things so it in holds there your, it holds your power cord in there which is super and cool your M &Ms. <laughs> and your m&ms and your m&ms yes um looks like we just got our msrp it is and? msrp of 144.99 there we go there we go is that what you knew brock okay thank you team for letting us know because that's great yes, thank you yep and you can go ahead and pre-order them they're just taking pre-orders right now, which is super cool. Um, we People ask about that all the time. And I love the fact that there's storage inside. Way Me to too. Go, I thought that was very smart. Way to go, Gibney, for 
doing that. Okay. What else? Let's see. MJ is asking, what is a bob die? So oh, that Chris, is do you want to talk question. about that? Yes. Bob stands for block on board. And that means all of the shapes you need to make that block are included on a single die board. Right. Different than the cube that have, sometimes you need multiple shapes to make a block. Yep. We just put everything there for you in one, one location. That's a great question. Do you have a favorite Bob die so that they could look on the website and look at your die? I do. Okay, what is so it? So Hattie's Choice is my favorite Bob really? die. Really? Yes. That is a, that's been around for a long time. Yes. That's great. Okay, so whoever asked the question, go to AccuQuilt.com and in the search engine, look for Hattie's Choice, H-A-T-T-I-E apostrophe S, Hattie's Choice. And you can see Chris's favorite, Bob die. That's a great idea. Okay, here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna glue here and then I'm gonna give it a good press. And then we're gonna trim it and then we're gonna cut our kitten, okay? And the reason we wanna give it a good press now is that none of that batting is exposed. Otherwise, it will melt on your brand new Elysio iron. Oh my gosh, there would be such drama if on the very first day of us having the Elysio iron, I messed it up. Okay. Luckily though, those Elysio irons have nonstick coating on the plate. So if you do happen to get fusible or anything melted on it, let it cool off all the way and it should pop right off. Oh, Chris, that is great information. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now I can just take my screaming hot iron and I'm just gonna press this down. And then I'm gonna be able to come along here in the back and trim my little fish for my placemat. This, isn't this fabric super cute? It's called Whiskers. Um, and this is yarn, is the name of the pattern of this particular um, fabric of this whiskers line. And it does, it looks like strings of yarn. How fun. Okay. All right. Look at this. And then I'm actually going to come here. And press it down. So when I go to add, I'm gonna cut my little kitten next. Um, and then when I cut it, it will be nice and flat here. I'm loving this, Chris. Just saying. So cute, I love those fabrics. Just loving it. Okay, so now while I trim around here on the outside, Chris, do we have any more questions? Let's see, I definitely have more pets here. Oh, tell us more pets. Let's see. Oh, someone says Pearl is so pretty. And Thank she you. is. She is. Um, I have a Malt Chi Apu. That's a lot. <laughs> Named There's Piper. So many she's letters. Going to be, <laughs> she's going to be 17 next month. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Pearl will be. I think how old Mason is. Pearl will be 10 this year. Ooh. Yeah. Yep. I think my cat is nine this year. Yeah. His records were inconclusive about his age, so <laughs> we just oh, guessed. Yeah, that was Pearl. I mean, she, they found her as a kitten in a trash bin, so. Aw, oh, I know, thing. with a little pearl necklace, which is why she's known as Pearl. Oh. I know. Aw. Oh. Let's see, Sue has two rescues. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, who is a <laughs> chihuahua. That is quite the name. Yes. And then Faith, who is a Yorkie. Oh, how fun. Very fun. The lovely Erica has Riley, and he is a corgi mix. Oh, I love corgis. They're yeah. so cute. She's, he's pretty, he's pretty cute. All right. Any other pets that we have? I feel like people are so excited to talk about their pets. 
Let's see. Uh, Patricia has a beagle. Her name is Lexi, and she is 10. Oh, okay. And did we find out what a ragdoll cat looks like? Um, I have not seen anything in the chat. Okay. We'll have to Google it. Everybody Google it after the show. Don't go anywhere now because we're almost done. Oh, Lynn has a calico cat who just turned 19 last month. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. There Let's we go. Let's see. Look at this. Look at this. Pam is saying that they used to have a cockatoo at the Brookfield Zoo, which is just outside of, side of Chicago, that lived to be 103 years old. Okay, how did they know that? <laughs> Who was around to know? I'm serious. Okay. Like, birds and turtles just have an incredible lifespan. Well, especially, like, tortoises. Like, uh -huh. isn't the oldest living... Thing on the planet a tortoise in the galapagos or something i mean yeah, it's huge it's like one... 112 or something again yeah, how do they like, know well i've seen one and i don't know where he is but okay. like they have like pictures of him throughout the years and so it's like the oldest recorded is you know from like oh sure 18 something and he's sure. still still kicking okay. it blows my mind <laughs> all right let's cut a kitten and then yes. we'll talk about binding and all of the things. Okay, don't forget, quilters, you can order our die catcher, pre-order it on our website today. All right, let's talk about the kitten die. It is the, what month is this? April, there it is. The die, April die to try. If you missed yesterday's show, um, you can go back and watch it on Facebook or YouTube or um, our website. Uh, we had some really great inspiration and we have some really fun projects associated with this kitten die. So it has the kitten shape and his eyeballs and his eyes and ears and a nose. So uh, you can always pre-fuse your fabric up to four layers of pre-fused in one pass. And what I'm gonna do here is lay out, I've already pre-fused our fabric. I'm gonna iron this so it will lay flat so we can do all of our shapes. And then we're gonna just applique him to our, actually it's a girl because it's pearl, um, to our placemat. All right, so here I have the nose and the two ears. Make sure I have that covered. And so this is a directional shape. So you want all your fabric facing up or down depending on what you wanna do here. Oh, here, there we go. All right, and then two ends of your eyes. Okay, what are those called? Pupils, thank you. Mm. Okay, this is on a five by 10 die board. It's gonna fit through all of our Go Cutters, including our Go Me, but we're using our Go Big today so you can see the Go Big die catcher. Look at how fun that is. Okay. Slide, don't lift. Oh, it's super staticky. Okay, we're gonna lay out our pieces. And then I'm gonna show you a trick about binding. And Chris is gonna announce the winner of our show. Okay, so here's all the pieces of our kitten. Ah. Okay. Um, Pearl has not pink ears, but she does today. And mm -hmm. she has a pink, she has in real life a black nose. And, oh, we should take the, the. so here's what I like to do. Uh, before I take off the back of the kitten, I'm gonna take off the pieces that we're gonna applique to it and then it's all correct. Because if I do this part wrong and it's already down on the placemat, then I ruined it, right? all of that work. Okay, there's the nose. And these are creepy eyeballs, so don't look at them right now until we put the pupils in. <laughs> 
Look at these. These are so funny. Oh, here, I'm going to use this one because this one was. I go. love the little pupils on this die that have like the little the sparkle little... cut out. Yes, right here. See, look, so don't cute. those look creepy? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, and then here's Pearl's little pupils. We don't want her to look cross eyed because that also looks a little creepy. Okay. Okay. So cute. All right. So now, before I press the kitten to the mat, I'm just going to press the pieces to the kitten. And I've turned off my iron because, one, it is screaming hot. Okay. Look at that. And now I can peel off the back and find the place where I want to put her. And now that I'm doing this, I will. So the reason her name is Pearl is because she has a little pearl necklace. So I am um, going to do a couple of little embellishments on this. I'm going to add some little circles there. Okay, but look at how fun that is. And I'm going to show you this trick about binding, and then Chris is going to announce the winner. So here we go. We have pressed down our little pearl. And I think, Chris, what I'm going to do is um, we have some, uh, uh, help me, guys, clear plastic vinyl we have on mm -hmm. our website. So I think what I'm going to do is before I bind it, I'm going to lay it down on the vinyl, trace it out, and then I can um, stitch it all together. So I'll, I'll post this on my AccuQuilt Educator Pam Heller uh, Facebook page so you can see it finished. But I want to show you this trick that I totally blew the other day on a live show. So um, what we want to do is I always like to miter my corners for binding. Here, I'm going to find a big piece right here. Okay. So in the non-AccuQuilt world, to miter your corners. Chris, do you always miter your corners? I used to not, but since I learned, I think, the trick that you're about to show, <laughs> yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. So in the non-quilting world, or AccuQuilt world, you would take your strips, and you would line them up like this, and then you would mark them here, and then you would sew them, and then you would trim this edge, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But then what happens is it comes right here and creates a miter corner. Well, I'm going to show you the super cool trick that I totally did wrong the other day, but I think I'm going to do right today. So what I want to do is I want to take a half square triangle that is bigger than my strip. So this is a two and a half inch half square triangle. This comes off what we call the value die. And I want to lay all my fabric facing up. Okay. Just like this. And what I want to make sure is that my fabric goes past this center line here. Okay? So what I'm going to do then is it's only going to cut where there's fabric and a mat. Okay? That's really important to know. So then I'm going to take a smaller mat. I'm going to take a, a six by six mat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up before this right here. This line right here, there's a blade here. And if I, if I cover that blade, then it's just going to cut my little piece off. But I want it to have this whole big strip so that I can miter my corners. And you can do six layers, but I'm going to do two. OK, ready? Watch this. Greg is already over here. Greg, what do you think of our new die catcher? Very do you, efficient. Very efficient. OK. Give it some love. Slide, don't lift. Hallelujah, Chris, I did it right. I did this wrong in an event the other day. All right, so now I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to sew these pieces together. See, look, we've cut off the dog ears. So I'm going to sew this piece together and then show you how it's going to lay out. It's going to be perfect. All right, so Chris, while I'm doing this for my binding, um, do we have any last questions or comments about pets? Yes. 
Uh, so someone's asking, what fusible are you using? Um, we have, I, I'm using a lightweight fusible. We have a whole bunch on the website. Okay. And then Sheila's asking, what is the best way to secure the teeny tiny appliques? I don't want to rely on fusible alone, but I've got some skinny flower shapes from the simple shapes to applique. You know what? I would just do a little top stitch, you know, from my machine. Wouldn't you do like just a lot, you know, just a stitch right there or two? Mm -hmm. I find that helps yeah. a lot. Or you could totally um, applique or totally quilt over the pieces. Oh, that would work too. Yeah. Yeah. Or on a lot of the applique shapes, you can download the free embroidery files if you have an embroidery machine oh, and let yes. it do it for you. Yep. Yep. Okay. So look how pretty my bias binding is. Then I'm going to fold it in half and we're going to add it to the front. No, we're, yes. Right, Chris? Do you add it to the front or the back? Um, I think you could do either. I don't know what the instructions say. Oh, I think they tell you to add it to the back. No, you're going to do the front and then stitch in the ditch. Okay. There we go. Have to think about this. But see, look, because it's bias, it's going to go around these little curves. Isn't that cool? Very All right. nice. So look for me on my social media. I'll finish. I will post Pearl on there. Um, finish that today or tomorrow. All right, uh, Chris, be sure and share all of our projects with us on our social media platforms. Use that hashtag AccuQuiltBuilt. All right, Chris, do you want to announce the winner of our live show today? Yes, I do. Drum roll, please. We have Natalie M. from Houston, Texas. Congratulations, Natalie. Natalie, I already sent you an email. <laughs> so tell me what size strip die you want, and I'll take care of it, and we'll send you this cute Oh, we'll send you the kitten die and a June Taylor placemat. We forgot to include the kitten die. We will do that. Oh. Um, don't forget the Go Kitten is the April die to try. You can get it here at AccuQuilt.com. While you're there, be sure and check out the Go Big die catcher. Uh, you can pre-order it today. Um, what else? Oh, you can get this if our, um, you can also get our kitten die from your local AccuQuilt retailer. All right, Chris, any last things before we head out today? I think we have most all of the questions covered. Yes. All right. On behalf of all of us who are helping out, um, there's Courtney and Lauren. Thanks for helping with the questions mm -hmm. today. And, of course, Chris, who's, you can find him at rosecityoriginals.com. Be sure and join his quilt along. Here in the Dream Studio, we have Greg and Kenyon and Brock. I'm Pam. On behalf of all of us, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join us on Tuesday, April 9th at 12 noon Central Time as we make bags and more bags. Then be sure to join us next week's AccuQuilt Live as we start the second AQS AccuQuilt Along of 2024. Hope to see you there.